Hi Arches! Today I'll be showing you how you can achieve the highest crit possible. Then we're going to take a look at the damage numbers of the crit bow build. We will then compare it to the scythe with the same build. I personally do not use the crit bow build, I have been though for the past few days to see what it's all about. I am a scythe main user due to its powerful stats and passive, although I do switch up weapons when I feel that the situation demands it. Some of you may know that the bow has the lowest damage per second in the game out of all the weapons. Some players have claimed it is now the most powerful weapon. Today we're going to find out. My name is Teeds, please subscribe and click the bell for more Archero videos. First, let's talk about crit. There are two stats, crit damage and crit chance. So crit is a stat where you have a chance to hit a lot harder than your base damage. You'll see these numbers in red and with the right abilities and equipment, you can hit pretty hard. Crit is based off double your base damage without modifiers. The crit damage will scale off attack boost and crit boost within the game. According to Reddit user Alex06, crit chance and crit damage are additive. This is determined through a memory scanner, which allows you to go into the game and have the exact numbers. So how much crit damage and crit chance can you achieve in total? Every weapon, without their passive, has a base crit chance of 15% and plus 100% crit damage. This is everything that gives you crit damage. Level 20 Helix gives you 20% crit damage to all heroes. Level 6 Eurosol gives you 15% crit damage to all heroes. Level 20 Bonnie gives you 20% crit damage to all heroes. Crit Master gives you 40% crit damage and Crit Miner gives you 20% crit damage. You could get a total of 215% damage when you crit. The total damage is therefore 315% or 3.15 times base damage. I will call that crit damage from now on so it's shorter. The Epic Brave Bro has an epic stat plus 50% crit damage. So the Epic Brave Bro would have a total in plus 265% crit damage. That is how much damage you can achieve if you had the two crit abilities along with the hero stats. For crit chance, a level 60 Eurosol gives you 5% crit chance to all heroes. Level 20 Furin gives you 2% crit chance to all heroes. Level 20 Tyranus gives you 2% crit chance to all heroes. A rare or epic Wolf Rings give you 5% crit chance each. Crit Master gives you 10% crit chance. And Crit Miner gives you 5% crit chance. All weapons have 49% crit chance if you had all of these hero stats, items, and abilities. Furin and Helix at level 80 would have 54% crit chance due to the level 80 personal stat which is plus 5% crit chance, again if you had all the crit chance. These things you can save up for and work towards. Just keep in mind that you don't always get crit master or crit minor in your runs, which are very significant to these numbers. The crit build that most players have been using is Helix plus 2 Wolf Rings plus the Epic Brave Bow. If you didn't have any other stats, that would equal to plus 170% crit damage and 30% crit chance if you have a level 80 helix. If not, then it would be 25% crit chance and still 170% crit damage. That's what the crit build basically is, but we're going to calculate if that's the best way to go with the crit build. Let's get into the comparison calculations. In this part of the video, we'll be comparing the crit build on Meowgic and Helix. We are using Meowgic and Helix for this video because both of these heroes are possible to get for free to play players and they are both very strong. This is not a should you use Meowgic or Helix, they both have their own tactical advantages and I would recommend having both in the future anyway. Furthermore, we'll be comparing the crit build on the bow and the scythe. I chose the scythe because it's a high tier weapon due to its very strong knockback, high damage and epic passive of headshotting enemies under 30% health. Another weapon that is relevant to this is the staff. With its epic passive, the lower the target's HP, the higher the crit rate. I did not include this weapon in these calculations due to not having any numbers for it. A disclaimer, this is mathematically based and just averages. Just because the numbers may be higher with one hero or weapon, it does not mean it is the most powerful or it is the best to use. Each weapon and hero have their own advantages and disadvantages. You should decide what to use upon that. Always use what fits your playstyle and what you have the most fun with. Here is a screenshot of my calculations. You may not understand what's going on here, so I'll just give you the final results as that's what matters. These calculations are on Meowgic, Helix with either the Bow or the Death Scythe. These calculations factored in damage, attack speed, 
crit chance, no crit chance, crit multiplier, no crit DPS, total DPS, and the final DPS result. DPS stands for damage per second. For all of these calculations, except one, we'll be factoring in Helix's special plus 20% crit damage for Miagic as well. For all these calculations, we'll be factoring in Miagic's passive with his cats. Miagic's cats can crit as well for 5.9 times the damage, which is a lot. But it is incredibly rare to happen. Because it's so rare, we will not be including the cat's crit in these calculations. For Helix, we'll be factoring his passive as well, so we'll have Helix sitting at 50% health. But remember, due to his passive, he can have stronger numbers if he were below the 50% threshold. I just wanted to clarify something before we begin. Helix's level 20 stat plus 20% crit damage is to all heroes. When he was first released, Archero failed to put the all heroes label on, so it was previously believed that only Helix got the plus 20% crit damage. I have Miagic and Helix both at level 62, so I use them directly for this comparison. The huge question for me why I decided to compare the bow to the death scythe was because the bow has the lowest DPS out of all the weapons in the game. The scythe is the third highest DPS of all the weapons in the game. The scythe is a high tier weapon and the bow before Helix wasn't considered the most powerful. The bow is a really good all-rounder and was just a weapon you couldn't go wrong with as it had a little bit of everything. Back to the question I had. I was wondering, even though the bow has the lowest raw damage of all the weapons, does the epic crit passive override the con to this weapon and take the spot above the death scythe? Here are the results of my level 62 Helix and 62 Miagic with an epic brave bow. The final DPS was 5,794 for Helix and 6,761 for Miagic. Let's compare these numbers to the epic death scythe. With Helix, 6,528. With Miagic, 7,830 DPS. From these calculations, we can already see that the crit passive does not seem to increase the bow's DPS compared to the scythe. Let's try these calculations with the full crit build. So we're now going to be adding the two wolf rings that both give you 5% crit chance. We're also going to bump them up to level 80, so now Helix has an additional plus 5% crit chance, meaning he has more crit than Miagic. The result with the epic brave bow, Helix 7724 DPS, Miagic 8100 DPS. The results with the death scythe, 8336 DPS, and for Miagic, 9,210 DPS. The results are still the same as previous, but it's good to note here that even with the 5% crit chance with this build, Miagic still deals more DPS than Helix at 50% health. For comparison's sake between Miagic and Helix, this calculation does not include the plus 20% crit damage on Miagic from Helix. So this is just Miagic without Helix's passive. With the epic bow, Helix 7,724 DPS, Miagic 7,931 DPS. With the Epic Scythe, Helix 8,336 DPS, Miagic 9,000 DPS. From these results, Miagic produced higher DPS without the extra crit from Helix than a 50% Helix would with his crit perk. But it does bring the gap between them closer. There is a point where Helix does override Miagic in terms of DPS. If Miagic and Helix both had Crit Master, Crit Miner, two Wolf Rings, and the Epic Bow, Helix would deal 10,410 DPS and Miagic would deal 9,764 DPS. Not only because of the extra damage, but this is where the crit chance really starts boosting Helix more. The gap between Helix and Miagic is now very small, but it is hard to get that much crit in the game. Although, if Helix were to fall below 50% health, the gap would be a lot bigger. From these calculations, mathematically, the bow falls behind the death scythe even with the crit build. However, there are some things to keep note and again, it just comes back down to personal preference and what you need. This is all mathematically based. There are some things I cannot calculate with math alone. We have players who stutter step and players who don't stutter step. So the problem with the death scythe is that it really benefits from stutter stepping. These calculations were calculated without stutter stepping, 
But if you're up against, let's say, really fast enemies, the Deaf Scythe would have problems reaching those enemies if you're not stutter stepping. And for those who do stutter step, I went frame by frame with stutter stepping to find out the frame difference and it's not exact but it's pretty close. The animation difference between the scythe and the bow is around 3 frames. This means that in situations where you have to dodge attacks more, you're more likely to cancel out the animation of the scythe over the bow. Due to this, the bow can deal more damage in these situations as it's harder to cancel the animation. If you cancel an animation before the attack, this means you lose an attack. That is the risk you have with the scythe. With these two weapons, I would say that the crit build doesn't matter if it's on the scythe or the bow. What you should think about is what you like better. The scythe has an epic passive where you can headshot enemies and it's got an incredibly strong knockback. While the bow is a great all-rounder, it has a decent knockback and high attack speed. Some who say to use the crit build is to use it with Helix for its best potential. I think Helix actually can do better with the crit build. Even though Meowjik does deal more with a crit build when Helix is at 50% health, Meowjik has less potential to reach higher with a crit build. So depending on your playstyle or what you're struggling with, if you're someone who tends to get hit a lot, then the crit build on Helix may be better for you. I personally, as I said before, do not use the crit build. I main Meowjik with a dodge build. Meowjik, in my opinion, works best with a dodge build, but still has strong results with a crit build if I wanted to change it up. Why I personally don't like to use Helix is because I don't like the high risk factor. However, that is not an issue for those who do like it because it is a very high reward as well. I'm just a very safe player and that's just my playstyle. I did not include Meowjik's cat's crit rate. However, in the future, if I somehow can find out what the crit rate is, I will revisit the topic in a much shorter form to let you know the results in case that changes anything for you. In conclusion, decide what works best for you. The crit build is a popular build nowadays and it's very strong, but it's also very flexible. It's not tied to the bow. Use it with what you love most. As for Meowjik and Helix, Helix has higher potential with a higher crit threshold, while Meowjik has higher raw base damage and is a lot better for those who do not want the high risk, high reward option. Some of you have also been asking if crit or dodge is better. I guess I can make a short video about that in the future, but the short answer is they're not directly comparable. It is, again, preference because they both provide completely different things. In my opinion, crit is not better than dodge and dodge is not better than crit. That is all for today's video. I thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe and click the bell for more art show videos. A like and comment would be super rad. I hope to see you again for the next one. Bye!